This is where there could be a problem. This is one of the smallest choke points of this river. They've cleaned this out, cleaned out below it to help it flow through faster, which it is. They've done a great job. Spanish Fork has been amazing. But this area, they keep big heavy equipment by as the floods are gonna get worse and worse over the next couple of weeks. Because if this clogs up with wood or debris, or if the water can't flow through it, which is possible if it really warms up, this river will back up and raise the water all the way down to all these homes. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. This is actually all the way outside of the river. It's come up over the bank over there. And now it's returning back into the river right here. And this is the most critical spot. We are now hitting the bridge. Wow. So right now, one of the bigger concerns is every now and then we get great big logs coming down this river that are freeing up that were on the bank for 40 years. And if it gets stuck right there, things are going to get really interesting tonight. We are at capacity for sure. I just looked up the chart. We're sitting at 2,200 cubic feet per second. Back here at my house again, this little shelf is over halfway buried and then it drops off really deep right out there. We still got about four feet before we breach onto our trail and then another four feet of our retaining wall. I still feel really good. I think we're in good shape. As far as our homes are concerned, I'm very worried about our neighbors. So I'm gonna keep coming out all night long to set an alarm every hour. And if it looks good, I'll go to two hours, but I'm gonna babysit this all night and make sure we're in good shape. And if there's a problem, we can attack it with the Gap Mini X and whatever else we got. Back to work. idea guys right here is the jogging trail We're officially breached both sides of the river depending on where you're at all right guys so far so good we're holding up we haven't had any real flood issues it's come up pretty high but nothing to get too scary the heat of the summer still coming but this showed up just last night and it's doubled in size in the last three hours. We're going to get some equipment, move it. All it took was one big tree to work its way down, get stuck and wedge across. But it keeps growing, so we got some big heavy equipment. We're going to get it yanked out of here, cut it off, haul it off. Hopefully, it's the last one we have and we should be all ready for the big water release here over the next month. So you guys know the drill. We got a lot to do. Back to work. We live in the coolest city ever. Spanish Fork came out, brought their big rig. 
We thought they were pulling out one big tree. We found two big trees. You can see the root ball on this one. So apparently this got stuck way up the canyon at one of the other city dams. And they tried to pull it out and they couldn't get it and they couldn't drag it out. It was wedged in. So they had actually had to just push it through. So the city apparently was looking for these two little guys and we caught them in our backyard. They were called and said, hey, warning, there's two big trees, actually three. We think the other one's still hiding right there. We think we caught all three of them at our place. So they did get a warning and they've been hunting the river up and down for miles and hours, wondering what happened to these three massive trees that had to get shoved through a dam. We caught all three of them here. Two down, one to go. We can't get this one. Couldn't reach this one yet. You see kind of that's hiding out there behind those trees. We're gonna try and chainsaw these root balls off, these two. Probably use this more green colored one. It's a really clean trunk. And we're gonna chop it into a 30 foot perfectly round ramrod, grab it with this machine and reach out there and try and poke it free, which means will basically be doing exactly what the dam did and sending that one down river. We can't reach it. So we've already let the bridge know that this is gonna be coming that way. And the next location know they've got another machine on standby and they're gonna try and pluck it out as we shove it downstream. So, so far we got two. Wish us luck on the next one and wish the next people downstream luck on catching it. We're fishing today, back to work. down into the dungeon depths of the house. Got pool equipment room going in there and boilers, underground vaults, storage rooms. Come this way, you can see what we set up. Now, I've got it all plumbed in and turned on. Nothing's running, but if you look down in there, you'll be able to see the depth of the groundwater. Now, when I engineered this house, I checked the highest floodplain back from the floods of 53 and 83, 84 to see what the water levels went to. And that's why my house sits a little higher out of the ground. And I have to give up a little steeper driveway. It's not much, it's, it's not bad at all, but my front driveway is a little bit higher approach to get my house further out of the ground. I really thought it was, might've been a waste, but I went ahead and did it anyway. Um, and I'm glad I did because right here, about, oh, 18 inches down is groundwater. Now I've got two pumps. You can see one pump sit three inches above the other. Both of those pumps look like they're plugged into the same outlet, which it's the same plug outlet on the wall, but I ran separate circuits to each one of these to two separate breakers. The point of that was to give redundancy. If the water level were to have come up enough it would automatically trip this pump by a float. And then that would pump out and empty so that the subgrade of my basement wouldn't get wet. And if for some reason that pump couldn't keep up and it's a high volume pump, then the water level would go up even higher and trip the second float for the higher pump. And then you'd have two pumps that could keep up with the basement. Now, when the water got really high, this first pump did turn on. I unplugged it and just watched where the water table got to. It never got high enough to flood my basement, but it got close. And that's where some of my neighbors didn't fare as well. I'm really fortunate. I feel lucky to have got this in and have it as a backup. I've even set another pump here, so I've got the same make and model on standby. I'm gonna go pick up two more because I've got everything cut to a certain length. I don't wanna replumb it. I'm gonna just leave spare pumps right here for down the road. But this system, if you remember when I was getting ready to do the foundation of this house, I did some test digs and I found the soil was still, it was good enough to put a house on and most people do. But I found if I just went six feet further, I would actually hit bedrock, a really heavy rocky base. 
And that's what I wanted this house on. And so I, I had dug all the way down to that rock base, which meant I was building in the water, put a fabric felt down across the entire area of my house, lapped it two directions, and then I put a gravel bed on top of that. What feeds this submersible French drain system is a series of big pipes that are socked. Those pipes are essentially double socked because I've socked the entire house so that no soil would get into the rocks that my house is built on. So essentially the whole underside of my home is a French drain with a series of pipes that loop around and come to here. Not just under the house, but going 10 feet to the edge of my dig. And then when I took that fabric, when I did that fabric, I ran it to the wall, ran it up the wall, then I closed it over itself to make basically a burrito wrap to keep any silt from rinsing down into the top of it. So I wrapped it all up tight and then I poured a little concrete right over top of that wrap. I probably could have done better. Most of the time I was just getting rid of my excess concrete, but I did make sure that that fabric was wrapped in really tight. So I have a really elaborate French drain. It worked really well. It may be the only time these pumps ever turn on in my lifetime, but if it does, we're ready. It worked. <laughs> that sounds weird. Let's get back to work. <laughs> All right, guys, here's an update on the river. I'm super happy to share that everything held up really well for me. I am sad to share that that isn't the case for a lot of the homes along the river, but all in all, fortunately, the river only got up onto the sandbags a few inches. If you look right back there on the back, you can see where my rocks meet, where the water kind of eroded away part of that hillside. That water was way up on that weed shelf, far enough to bury all the weeds, and literally about a foot or two from the top. So we got pretty close, but some of the homes did flood all the way down our street and beyond. There's two parts that caused some of the flooding on some of my neighbor's homes. Part of it was the river runoff coming up so high. The other part is there's so much water went into the Utah Lake nearby that the actual groundwater raised up underneath a lot of these homes. And so some of these homes flooded from groundwater coming up. Others flooded because the river came up so high, it chased back some of the pipes into the city infrastructure and kind of let water trickle back. Uh, anytime you put piping into a river for storm drainage and runoff, which is how this system is done through these neighborhoods, when they're backfilled, some of those pipes, they're planned to be way above waterline indefinitely. But that waterline came up so high that it back chased some of those pipes. So there may have been some of the flooding caused by that, certainly groundwater, and a little bit from the water's edge going up and flooding a couple other homes that the actual river level flooded their homes. At my house here, we got really fortunate. You can kind of see back here, the water's now going down. We're down about four feet from where we were at Highmark. You can see all the sticks deposited up there. The water got much higher than that, but as it started to recede, it started dropping all the sticks on top of that shelf. These are the bigger rocks we had at the base. There's still a couple more rows deeper. This water is way down now. If you look on the other side, you can see a water line. We're actually so confident now that the city has gone ahead and issued a release to pull the sandbag. So the worst moment we had was a thunderstorm was rolling through while we were at the high runoff and there was a big concern it would melt the big snowpack and kind of give us a big gush. That storm kind of petered out a little bit and shifted away from the main path of where the snow comes for this river. So we dodged a really big bullet and uh, kind of fared really, really well. Uh, also, everyone around here is now set up for a future event. I think everyone's prepared, uh, well-established. Mark's house, you could say he got a little bit flooded, but not his house. His backyard's got a layer of mud on it now because it came up his first layer of uh, grass. Several other homes, their fire pits got buried like my brother Mark's did. We're into the middle of summer now. The big runoff is done. All the low level snow is melted. We're gonna be running water at this level for most of the rest of the summer, which is still way, way above average. What we didn't have time to do, I now have plenty of time to do. I'm gonna go through and stuff 
really good soils into the rock, something that doesn't want to rinse away, so certainly not a sand, but some kind of a, a clay base, but I want a lot of nutrients in it. So I'm going to try and blend up some soils, pack it in these rocks, and then I'm going to plant it up with all kinds of different colors and flowers. Um, just make sure I get a ground cover that spreads, roots in, and roots deep. And now I know that we've tested this rock with water all the way up and uh, I know it's not going to go anywhere. But now that I've got a little more time, I'm going to season it up and root it in. And then if we have another event, I won't even think twice about it. Once the roots are set, it's never moving. There are a lot of people when you look at this, you think this water is going to be a foot or two deep. Let me show you how far this wall goes down. Rock. Let me go down. Oh. There we go. And I'm still hitting rock that we installed. It goes deeper back there. That's about that point. So let's say seven plus feet just where I stabbed. And I know it's deeper, so it may not look like a, a lot of water, but this is the narrows dynamite bend. It's deep and it gets moving fast, so um, I kind of like that I live on Dynamite Bend, but it certainly is what made me nervous and made me put up these rocks. I had someone come by and say, hey, now that it helped, you wish you didn't spend the money. And the answer is no, I'm absolutely happy I spent it because there's a couple places up there that that water moved the earth way back. And this bend was the risk zone. This is where the water got the deepest and the fastest and nothing moved at my end. So worth every penny and I slept at night. So I'm good. That's the worst.